Hello, my name is Lawrence Wilson. I'm a product manager with Brody and Schwartz. And today we're going to talk about how to choose a power sensor. I'm going to give you a quick overview on some of the key factors that you need to consider when you're choosing a power sensor, because there are many sensors out there, all with seemingly similar performance, but choosing the right sensor is going to make a big difference in the accuracy of your results and the time it takes to get your measurements. The first thing you need to consider is what type of signal are you analyzing? Not the frequency, but the type of signal and what type of power measurements do you want? Do you want to look at average power? Do you want to look at a signal that's a time slot or a time bursted signal? Or are you going to look at a pulse signal and want to measure rise time and fall time and characteristics like that? Those are the sort of things that you will see and the slide here shows you some of the things to consider. The type of things you must consider and look at when you're choosing the sensor. Is it a CW signal? Is it a pulse signal? Is it a digitally modulated signal? All these sort of things are going to help you understand the type of sensor you need. And when I say understand the type of sensor, there are four key types of sensors. There's a multipath or universal sensor that applies to the majority of the cases. There is a thermal sensor, which is the most accurate type of sensor. There's a wideband sensor, which is going to be very good for doing pulse measurements. Then there is an average power sensor, which is ideal for people doing EMC measurements because it has frequency range all the way down to 9 kilohertz. So that's the first thing you look at, what type of sensor you need. And once you've narrowed it down, the next thing you need to look at is how do I operate it. Modern sensors today do not need the traditional base unit, all the measurements made in the head, so you now have to decide do I want to control it over Ethernet, in a LAN environment, over USB, or from a traditional power meter. With all those things in, you've narrowed down the selection, and now you can just look at the performance specifications of the sensor to see what's important. And when it comes to those performance uh, characteristics, there's two or three things to consider. One is the speed, how quickly can I make the measurement? But that on its own isn't the answer, because you're looking for accurate measurements. So the question really is, how quickly can I get an accurate measurement? And that accuracy is going to be based on two or three different parameters. And those parameters are the uncertainty or the noise floor of the sensor, the VSWR or the match of the sensor. And these are big factors in determining how accurate you can make a measurement. And basically what it boils down to is, OK, I'm going to get a lot of specs and a power, a power sensor data sheet is very long and complex. How do I choose which one is best and which one isn't? And the rule of thumb I always give people is look at the noise floor. Because the less noise you have in the sensor, the quicker you'll make an accurate measurement. And what I mean by this is the information shown on this slide. To make any kind of accurate measurement, you need to make a number of different averages to get a reading. The more averages you make, the more time it takes. The relationship, as it explains on the slide, shows that there's also the noise factor. So the more noise you have, the more averaging you need to do. So you have to average out that noise. So here's the key thing. Go with a sensor that can make fast measurements and has a low noise floor. When you have a low noise floor, you need to do less averaging, which means you're going to get those accurate results quicker. And that is the key thing to look at. And the diagram here says go for a sensor with the uh, least internal noise, with the best RF performance in terms of uncertainty numbers, with a fast measurement speed, and when you combine all three of those together, you can be able to get accurate results quickly, and that is the key for any power sensor in, uh, measurement you're making. Rodin Swartz offer a range of these sensors, all different uh, types, the average sensor, multipath, wideband and thermal, all the way from DC to 110 gigahertz. Plus, we have a lot of content that talks about the fundamental knowledge and technology used in sensors, and that information is available on rodianschwartz.com. Thank you.